Hello and Happy New Year to you. This is where we've left off in previous screencasts. We've got these two nice scenarios that uh, exp express some uh, requirements for the system. Uh, here are the five steps that we have so far. And as you recall, in our last screencast, we wrote this uh, custom RSpec matcher have error message. In uh, this session, I really want to focus on these two, the two win scenario or steps. As you can see, we have a lot of duplication here. In fact, uh, they're exactly identical except for the very last portion of the last line. And I want to talk about what we can do to get rid of this duplication. So if you have an application of any size, you're going to find that navigating through the pages is the thing that you do a lot of. And uh, it's very common to have to navigate through two, three, four pages or so to get to the page that you want to test. And what we don't want to do is duplicate this all over the place because if we have to go back at some later time and change something in the middle of that navigation, we have to go find every place in the code where that exists, update it, and change it. Luckily for us, the uh, page object gem can allow us to put this knowledge in one location and uh, simplify our code in the process. So earlier in the second screencast, we mentioned the page factory module that we add to the world in our env.rb file. You can see it here. And this has added two methods that we've been using so far all over the place. It added the visit method that we use here, which basically uh, opens up the browser or takes the browser to a specific URL and instantiates a new instance of the object we pass it. We also talked about the on methods, which basically manages creating objects for us as well. But there are several other methods that are a part of that, and we're going to talk about two of them now. The first one is one called navigate to, and the second one is a method called continue navigation to, and these allow us to navigate through pages using default behaviors, uh, allow us to stop at any place during that route or during that navigational process and do non-default things. But the first thing that we have to do in order to be able to use this is we have to set up something called routes. Now, a route is nothing more than a path through your application. And you can have as many of these as you want the one caveat is, is that you have to have one route that you call default. So let's go ahead and set one of those up right now. So we're using the, we're setting the routes on the page factory itself. And routes is actually a hash. And the keys are their name. So since we need one that's called default, we will do this. And we are going to create the value as an array. Actually, as an array of arrays. And inside of each inner array, all we do is we give it the class name and the method to call. So here is the, the first entry. There's the second one. So there is our default route. And like I said, you can create as many routes as you want. So let's say if we wanted to create another route, we would simply just do it like this. And we would give it a name and just define it in the same way as we did the one that we have here. Okay, now with this in place, we can simply go over and use it as it is. So let's go see what we can do in our steps. So in this uh, scenario, we have navigated through all of these pages. 
uh, in a default fashion. So what I want to do now is just go ahead and navigate to the last page. And perform its action. And what I can do is I can get rid of all of this. And if we try to run this scenario, let's see what happens. And it worked. So let's do the same thing with our second uh, step. And again, I can get rid of all of this. And let's go ahead and run this and see what it does. Excellent. Now I want to talk a little bit about, more about what we could do here. So let's say if I wanted to navigate to the shopping cart page and in that case I wanted to do something that was not necessarily standard. I can do it here or I can also do the block version. select dog treat or something like that and then what I could do is immediately after that so continue navigation to actually will pick up where current page is so in this case what it did is it kept track of the fact that we'd only navigated to the shopping cart page and when I said continue navigation to it actually picked up where we left off and continued on. So that is a nice handy set of methods. You can navigate to the page where you want to do some non-default behavior and do what you need to do there. And then when you're done, you could say continue navigation to the next page that you want to do some non-default or all the way through the route if you want to do that. So I also want to show you real quickly how you would use a different route other than the uh, default route because we are using default route right now so let's say if I have defined another route to the checkout page and I called it some other route I could simply say this so navigate to checkout page using some other route and that is basically how I would go about telling it to uh, navigate to that page and use a route that is not the default route and that is basically all I have for you today a nice short little screencast showing you something that will really clean up your step definitions now as you can see every one of our step definition is one line long and uh, I'm very happy with this code see you next time